better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and happy Free Comic Book Day. This is obviously going to go up after Free Comic Book Day, but uh, since today is Free Comic Book Day, and I'm uh, recording this before midnight on my time, I want to talk about the Spider-Man Venom comic that came out today for Free Comic Book Day. If you don't know what Free Comic Book Day is, let's get into it real quick. It is a really cool yearly nerd event, uh, kind of like a nerd holiday for me at least, uh, where and for a lot of people, I'm sure. It's where your local comic shops are given, well, not given, really. They do have to pay for them, but they pay, like, really low cost for them, which is uh, a bunch of comic books that Marvel makes, DC makes, and independent companies make. And they try to get, like, you know, maybe one, two, or three titles from each company and put them through Diamond Comics and then and their Diamond Distributions, and then those go into your comic book stores, and then, boom, you get Free Comic Book Day, which is an event to kind of promote literacy, make comic books for people of all ages and all different types of collectors, some books that have special events that are going to happen in them, like the one we're going to talk about today, which makes it kind of a collector's item. And then there's other ones that are just for fun. Some are reprints, you know, some are directed just for kids, but it's a cool way for the whole family to kind of get involved, check out a local business, like a local comic store, and, and maybe even check out comics. Maybe they saw Guardians of the Galaxy in the theaters or, you know, saw some comic book movie and they're like, you know, I do kind of want to give this a chance or maybe get my kids into this. So free comic book day is kind of a window into that. It gets you into the stores to look around, get some free books, but also give a chance to the, the people who own those businesses to maybe sell you on some other books that uh, that may you know interest you. So uh, I'm a big fan of free comic book day. I used to spend most of my times at Golden Apple Comics in LA doing signings on free comic book day and just going in and helping and, you know with the event. And it's always a blast, it's always a good time. I was at Richard's Comics once uh, for free comic book day in uh, South Carolina. And then I spent today here in Florida at Free Comic Book Day at Coliseum of Comics. I went right after work and I was like, I got to get this Spider-Man Venom book before they're gone because I knew something was going to happen in it that might make some collectors want to go grab some. And the cool thing is they limit you. Most stores are like, hey, we ordered like, you know, a thousand of these or whatever, but everyone's only limited to one of them or two of them. So that's cool. That gives everyone a chance, uh, you know, throughout the day to get them, which is nice. So yes, the comic I'm talking about is Spider-Man Venom right here. This is uh, Spider-Man Venom number one. It's always a number one, uh, you know, but uh, this has two short stories in it. One from the creative team of Spider-Man, which is Zeb Wells and Patrick Gleason, I think is the artist on this one. Uh, so we have a short story in there of Spider-Man and then we have a short story in the back with Venom. This has been going on. This is our third year in a row where we've had Zeb Wells slash Al Ewing stories in our, you know, uh, free comic book day books. So we've had Spider-Man Venom from two years ago and then last year's Spider-Man Venom. And this is actually a key issue, too, if you're out there collecting everything uh, that this character is, you know, they introduce a character in this or reintroduce a character in this book that we haven't seen in Marvel Comics for a while. Uh, this is kind of a reintroduction into a character named Flexo, the Rubber Man. <laughs> this is an old, old Marvel character, way back even before Marvel was Marvel and there were still kind of timely comics and everything. Um, they released a comic called Mystic Comics in 1940 all right so we're going back all the way to the year after batman was created <laughs> and the two years after superman was created um we're going way way back to the early days of comic books 1940 january of that year that's even the title of the story january 1940 and you have uh, a lot of books that were tying into you know world war one world war two and things like that at this time and so what happens in this story is that we have two scientists talk about a meteorite that they found and i am going to get into spoilers so if you don't want any spoilers you can download this for free if, if you don't have a comic book store to go pick this up in or if you don't want to hear me talk about it you want to experience it yourself you can go on the uh, kindle app and comiXology app you know on uh you know through amazon and you can download a free one there i believe too and probably even on marvel unlimited and you know whatever other digital ones you know sites that are out there so yeah if you want go ahead and pick that up and, and read it for yourself and then come back here and, and check out what our thoughts are and share your thoughts in the comments below these two brothers joel and joshua williams they find this meteorite they're scientists they find this meteorite and inside of it there's something alive sound familiar and they bring it back to their lab to study it and they end up calling it living rubber and so that's kind of where the story starts in this book in this free comic day issue and they have a reporter that's coming to report on it and he's like yeah so what have you been doing with this we heard about your findings you know, what's going on because uh, it says in the, you know, we heard rumors that this thing that you found on a meteorite, you created something out of it and it saved your lives. And I actually am a reporter for a book called Mystic Comics. So it's very meta in this. And they're basically referencing Mystic Comics itself. And he's like, for the first issue, I want to tell the story 
of your robot that you know saved your lives and so that's what's happening here and joel is uh maybe you know he he kind of is hesitant he doesn't want to say too much about what's really happening because he's afraid of the truth getting out there and joshua is a little bit more like hey this is great this is good publicity this will get our findings out there because we found this creature and it didn't really do much it just sat in a petri dish for a while until uh, it tasted some of my blood because I got a, a cut in the lab and it tasted some of my blood. And then we found out that it likes chocolate or like a, a special chemical that's in chocolate. Hello, it's a symbiote. Um, so they're, re, you know, they're rewriting the history of Flexo the Rubber Man and actually making him not just a robot that was created, but an actual symbiote. So this is something I saw going around you know, in the news uh, with uh, different uh, comic book websites saying that Al Ewing is going to redefine Venom and symbiotes and what their history is in Marvel. Sound familiar? Because <laughs> we've gotten that already with Donny Cates, where they tied, you know, Venom and symbiotes into Thor mythology. And now we're going to get other stuff where, you know, he's going back to Golden Age characters and uh, and tying into their history. So buckle up, kids. <laughs> Here we go. Um, as if time travel and all that stuff wasn't enough. Now we got uh, 1940s, which I guess will play into the time travel because maybe at some point someone will go back and undo the findings that created Flexo. I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, the two brothers are being interviewed and they're talking about their invention. And after they started giving the creature, they were like, oh, it has a sweet tooth. They started giving it chocolate and it started to grow and it became almost man sized. And so they shaped it and uh, I guess added robotics or whatever is inside Flexo uh, and to combine with it. So it doesn't have a host. As far as I know, it doesn't have a host. And they don't really say in this book if he has a host or not. Um, so this journalist is like, yeah, you know, I've talked about the Human Torch and some of these other Golden Age heroes. And, uh, you know, the original Human Torch, not the one on the Fantastic Four. Um, so I want to write something about your Flexo since he came in and saved your life. So how did he do it? And how he really did it, you know, he has all these uh, abilities where he can stretch and, you know, get through bars and fight criminals and stuff. But uh, the two brothers lie. And they say, well, he released a gas. And actually, if you want to check out any of the old uh, pages from the Mystic Comics issues, issues one through four, where Flexo originally, uh, originally appeared in, you can check out I Spy a Symbiote. I'm going to put a link to his Instagram down below. I Spy a Symbiote has really cool stuff on their page, and they were posting some Flexo stuff on there. So you can kind of see some of those uh, images from old Mystic comics uh, that were reprinted recently. So you can check those out. And uh, yes, if you uh, if you want more appearances of Flexo, uh, Flexo also appeared in the Marvel Zombies series, the, the I think the Volume 5 or something like that. It was called Destroy. And in Marvel Zombies, he actually died in that series. That came out in 2012. So I thought Flexo was gone forever. <laughs> so when I saw this and that they're bringing him back, I was like, interesting. And I didn't even realize that in last year's free comic book day book, uh, which is actually not this one, this is two years ago, last year's, this is last year's, um, this one has a, a, you know, a couple pages of Eddie talking to the hand, <laughs> you know, talk to the hand, Eddie. Um, he's talking to the hand, you know, about the history of symbiotes and everything like that. And that a big war is coming, obviously. And they have this big two page spread and right there, that little guy that we didn't know who it was last year is actually Flexo. So that's Flexo right there. Uh, so they've been hinting at him for a while, and this has been a plan for a while. So what the two brothers say to the reporter is, hey, you know what? Uh, Flexo has the ability to release like a, a non-toxic gas that can knock people out. And that's how he saved us. And so the reporter's like, cool, I'm going to write that down, and I'm going to go print you know, Mystic Comics number one and talk about your character. And so in a very meta way. So he goes off to do that. And meanwhile, the two brothers are like, why didn't, you know, you know, one brother's like, well, we could have told him the truth, right? And the other brother's like, yeah, you're right. But you still told him a little too much. They might find out the truth. He's like, no, no one's ever going to find out, you know, what really is going on with Flexo. Because what really is going on is that he symbioted out. And, uh, and that's how he saved them. And <laughs> I think he ate everybody in the room, maybe. So uh, so anyway, so that's where the story ends, is the brother's going like, should we have told them the truth? He's like, no, and I'm glad we didn't. Uh, but they may find out one day. And he's like, ah, I don't know you know, if they ever will. And now that those scientists are probably long gone, they're long dead, somehow, somewhere, someone got a hold of Flexo and has sicked him after Venom. So that's the final page there. So that's going to set up his next appearance, which will be coming up in the Venom comic books. So yeah, pretty interesting to take an old Golden Age character like Flexo that you know most people forgot about and kind of bring him back, even though he was brought back already in uh, you know about 10, 11 years ago in the Marvel Zombie series Destroy. Um, but this is kind of, like I said, a reinvention of him, reinventing his origin, and now he's the property of possibly someone else who has kind of slightly redesigned him, modernized him a little bit, 
and is sending him after Venom. Um, so with him being a symbiote and with us learning his actual secret origin in this, which is very DC Comics, uh, but less, us learning his secret origin in this issue, um, I think that's going to be, I don't know, it's interesting. It's an interesting wrinkle. I mean, I am kind of get tired of the point where every time someone comes on a book now, it's to reinvent the origin of a character. I, it's always something like that, like, hey, let's just redefine the characters or what we knew of the characters and that they think that's just the way to make interesting stories. And it doesn't always work for me. I'm, I'm like, no, you don't have to. Sometimes you can just tell great stories with the characters as they are, like I think Chip Zdarsky's doing with Daredevil, where there's some uh, things being changed and worked around and stuff, but mostly all the characters are their characters and there's not any major, major reveals um, that completely redefine the characters or their space in the Marvel Universe. And that's kind of what I like about Zdarsky's run and most runs that do something like that, like Moon Knight right now uh, that Jed McKay's doing, uh, which we'll talk about because Moon Knight meets Venom uh, again, and we're going to talk about that in the next episode. So in this one, though, go out there, you know, support your local comic shops, pick up some free comics, and if you can, check out some other comics on the wall that are for sale and see if any of those interest you and help support local businesses that way for sure. Um, thank you so much for watching the show as always. Uh, this was kind of fun to talk about and talk about an old golden age character like Flexo and, and seeing him brought back for the second or third time because I think one time Jimmy Wu in Agents of Atlas was going to recruit uh, Flexo and then didn't at the last minute in one of those miniseries. So he's been, you know, some people have tried to bring him back a couple times in the past like decade or so, but this seems like a, a proper return from the, for the character, uh, but also a new status quo for him as well with him being tied to symbiotes so what do you think of that or you know i would love to hear your thoughts you've heard mine let yours be known down below and as always we'll keep talking down there thanks for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the next episode peace